Hi, I'm Sam with JBugs.com. We had a 1966 Beetle in our shop to be completely rewired, and at our request, it came in with the engine removed so we could route all the wiring behind the engine and firewall tarboard. Now that the wiring and tarboard are both in place, we can install the engine. In this case, the engine is a late model dual port 1600cc with a 12 volt generator. We'll start by making sure the transmission mounts are in good shape and install a new throwout bearing. This is a swing axle transmission, but it has been rebuilt with a later model cross shaft and centering sleeve. So we install the corresponding throwout bearing, which has the built in clips. The bearing is set in place on the sleeve, and the clips are pried out and over the throwout shaft arms on either side to hold it in place. We check the operation by pulling the clutch arm back and pull on the bearing to make sure it's secure. Now we can chalk the front tires and get the rear of the car jacked up high enough for the engine to slide underneath the apron or fender. And with the height confirmed, the car is set up on jack stands. Then we slide the new 12 volt starter into the starter bushing to make sure the transmission has the correct bushing. And with the fitment confirmed, the starter is set in place in the transmission and the lower nut is tightened. The ignition switch wire is plugged into the starter solenoid and the power that runs to the voltage regulator on the generator is attached to the threaded post on the starter. The positive battery cable attaches to this post as well. A new fuel line to chassis grommet is slid in place onto the fuel line as the original grommet was missing. And as the rear engine to body seal and the firewall seal are both new and installed properly, we can get to work on the engine. The rear engine tin is removed to give us more clearance against the rear apron. And the spark plug wires are pulled off and set away from the edges of the engine to prevent them from being damaged. Then the engine is slid under the car and a jack is rolled in at one side. From inside the engine compartment, the side of the engine is lifted up so the jack can be slid underneath it. And the engine is jacked up into the engine compartment while carefully directing the engine to prevent the generator from hitting the apron. The engine is jacked up further, and once the lower engine studs are in line with the lower mounting holes in the transmission, we reach behind and slide the accelerator cable through the rear engine tin into the accelerator cable tube in the fan shroud and pull it through to the opposite side. Now, the engine can be pushed into place into the transmission, and once the lower engine studs are through the transmission, nuts are threaded on and tightened down and the fuel hose is pressed onto the chassis fuel line. The upper left engine bolt is installed into the transmission, threaded into the engine, and tightened down. Next, the D-bolt is slewed through the starter, transmission, and engine. Then in the engine compartment, a nut is threaded onto the bolt and tightened down while an assistant holds the bolt head in place at the starter to prevent it from turning. With the engine in place, the spark plug wires are reattached to the appropriate spark plugs. Then the rear engine tin is set onto the engine and the rear engine seal is pried up and over the tin. Once the seal is on top of the tin, the tin is bolted to the engine. The accelerator cable is attached to the carburetor and then the wires at the top left of the engine compartment are routed to the engine with the longer wires going to the voltage regulator. The shorter portion of the harness houses a black wire which is connected to the positive terminal on the coil and a blue-green wire which is plugged onto the oil pressure switch. The longer leg of the harness going to the voltage regulator contains a red wire which is connected to one of the B-plus terminals on the voltage regulator and a blue wire which is connected to the 61 terminal on the voltage regulator. And with that, our job is done. The car can be jacked up off the jack stands and lowered down to the ground. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Say hello or let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. And when you need parts for your vintage Volkswagen, head over to jbugs.com.